Hello, world. I don't know why this surprised me, but Japan is a snowy place. Like it straight up has the top three snowiest cities in the world. I'm from Canada, and I was so used to hearing that we're a cold and snowy country that I thought we'd have Japan beat. I was wrong. At least about the snowy part. Although we do have two cities in the fourth and fifth spot, so not completely wrong. But I want to be clear, Aomori is the snowiest city with over 100,000 people in the world. But there are plenty of areas that get more snow. It's just that they're not major population centers. How you deal with the snow when there's over 100,000 residents can be quite different from what you do when there's 100 or 1,000. So how much snow does Aomori City get? Well, this is a tricky one, and if you look at articles, you'll get numbers that range from 6 meters, or 20 feet, up to 8 meters, or 26 feet. They're all kind of right. That's because Aomori City covers a large and geographically diverse landscape. First off, you have the Bay Area, which tends to be warmer and wetter. Along the west and the east, there's not many people living there. Trust me, I went by train just to see. But in the center of the harbor lies the main part of the city where the majority of people live. As of March 1st, 2022, it had snowed 579 centimeters. Then you have the airport, which is nearly in the mountains at 198 meters above sea level. It receives the most snowfall out of any airport in Japan. As of March 1st, it racked up 634 centimeters. But if you really go up into the mountains, like Mount Hakoda at 1,584 meters, you'll get way more snow, as in 1,306 centimeters, or 43 feet. And yes, this is still technically the city of Aomori. So when you say Aomori city, it really depends on what part of it you're talking about. However, I think it's safe to say that whichever part of the city you measure, it's a lot of snow. And I, I really wanted to know what life is like in the snowiest city in the world. To find out, my sister-in-law, Akko and I traveled to Aomori on January 9th, 2022. When we arrived, it was roughly halfway through the snow season and not quite yet at peak snow. And to my consternation, it was a sunny day with no snow falling. How can you show the snowiest city in the world and not have snow falling? But there was a lot of accumulated snow already. I mean, the snowbanks on the streets were already higher than people's heads. In lots of places, they were easily taller than the vehicles. Since it was a sunny day, I made the snap judgment to head right to the top, to Mount Hakoda, because I figured I wouldn't be getting any sunny shots if my plans for snowfall worked out. To my delight, chasing the sun worked, and I was able to capture the scenery under a blue sky. Of course, this lasted all of a minute. While I was disappointed, the stormy weather totally makes sense. You don't accumulate 13 meters of snow by being nice and sunny all the time. The reality is, the conditions on the mountain are mostly cloudy and windy and snowy. Just look at the trees. They are constantly blasted with wind and snow to form juhyo, or in English, snow monsters. It was amazing how fast the light could change. It felt like it went from the middle of the afternoon to the evening in the span of a few minutes. It wasn't hard to imagine how, in 1902, Japanese army soldiers got lost in a blizzard here, and 199 lives were lost. That's why if you go skiing or snowboarding here, a local guide is recommended. <laughs> if throughout the video you notice Akko walking around oddly, she watched some TV program uh, teaching her how to walk in snow. Where are you? Where are you? 
ここここまで大丈夫心配しないでください何をしますかIt doesn't seem to ever go much below minus 2 or minus 3 degrees Celsius in the winter, and it often goes into the plus ranges during the day. So, in Fahrenheit, what I'm saying is that the temperature usually hovers around 32 degrees, just around freezing. Thus, you get a mix of rain and snow. That's also why a lot of people had lightly insulated rubber boots versus heavily insulated but non waterproof boots that I was expecting. So, while these $20 boots I picked up at the workwear store in Tokyo did unexpectedly well with the snow and ice, they eventually got soaked through by the slushy snow I'd encounter. Today's main goal during the day was to see how the city buses handled the snow. About special equipment, and was surprised to hear that there really is none beyond snow tires. I was expecting chains, but that's only for buses going up the mountains. Basically, what it feels like is that the priority is on keeping the roads clear. If you do that, then all the vehicles can operate with snow tires. If you're not going up the mountain, four wheel drive isn't necessary. I was expecting a bunch of special snow gear inside of people's everyday cars, but nope, not much to talk about. But back to the buses. We were able to score a front seat ride to see how the driver navigated his route into the main station. We arrived at the start of the route a few minutes early, which gave me the chance to check out my surroundings. At the entrance to a Buddhist temple, the signs warned about falling snow from the roofs. Falling snow from roofs is, in fact, a major cause of deaths when it comes to clearing snow, so you do have to be careful. On some roads, you'll come across wind fences set up to stop drifts of snow from piling up on the roads. And the large amounts of snow piled up alongside the road create snowbanks so big that they narrow the roads. In certain parts of the city, a two lane road will act more like a single lane one, and either the bus or the oncoming traffic will have to yield and let the other pass. Sometimes there's so much snow at the bus stop that a little spot needs to be carved out so that passengers can get on and off. Here you can see that the bus stop isn't even cleared. Passengers would just get on and off a little bit past the stop in this case. This stretch is one of the narrowest along the route. It could get quite bumpy. I think it'd be fair if the city started advertising free massages during bus rides in the winter. You could tell the drivers were used to dealing with the snow, especially the speed at which they'd pass when there was space to do so. The traffic must flow. In some spots, though, it was so narrow that all the drivers could do was slowly pass and trust that their vehicles wouldn't slide into the bus. I was going to say that in the main part of the city, it was cleared more, but if you look at the road, you can see how an entire lane was swallowed up by the snowbank. Over here, the snowbank has only overtaken half the road. I love how the snowbanks are so high near the main bus loop that you can barely see the buses behind it. Upon arrival, I was actually surprised since there was no snow on the ground. The previous night, I had seen that there was a decent accumulation of snow. I only realized just now while editing that the reason the bus loop was clear in the morning is because snow clearing by the city is mainly done at night.
青森市役所の道路維持課雪対策室長をやっております立田と申します、えー、青森市の雪に関することまあ、主には除排雪をやっております、はい、昼間は基本的には除雪作業はしませんなので夜間作業をしていてお昼の間は睡眠とって休んでっていう形でちょっと昼夜逆転みたいな生活にはなっていると思います So tonight, we had an appointment with the city to watch them clear snow, and I was extremely worried that the shoot would be ruined since it was forecasted to rain. But snow clearing was necessary, as the snow banks that had built up on the side of the roads needed to be broken down and hauled away. So whether it snows or not, there's always snow clearing work to do. We started off the night a bit in reverse, where we went to one of the snow dumps along the seaside. I never lived in an area where it was possible or practical to dump snow in the ocean, so it was eye-opening for me to see. You'd have small little trucks where the only way to dump the snow was the old school way with a shovel. Then you'd have bigger trucks with a hydraulic bed that lifts up, that still sometimes required manually having to shovel the snow out. You'd also see one of the city's snowplows come by and work on rearranging the snow and pushing some of it into the ocean. Soon I would see even bigger trucks dumping their load. And then the really big trucks would come along and show everyone up. So satisfying. And even though I was merely filming, I saw some situations like this where it felt as if I were backed up. Like you just wanted the snow to come out, but it just wouldn't. It must have been more frustrating for the drivers as they'd have to get their shovel out and clear it manually. However, we have to keep things moving, and thus we're off to our next stop, which was the start of the official nighttime snow clearing at a parking lot of a home improvement store. ここガッツ、うん、ガッツ、はいはいはい、ガッツ、ガッツで戻ってきて、えー、こっち入ってこう来てこう戻って、うんうんうん、今度こっちに入ってくんだよ。えー、Even though the operation was being done at night so as to minimize the disruption to traffic, the roads were in fact not closed off. I was surprised with all the different types of vehicles involved, all with a role to play. The first that came by was scraping the ice and snow from the street, your standard snowplow tractor. After that, it was another snowplow tractor, but this time it had a larger and directional plow. Rotary, the road is not going to stop, but the road is not going to stop. 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 The dump trucks are so important to the operation because there's simply nowhere for the snow plows and snow blowers to put the snow. That's why, if you take a look behind the snow clearing equipment, it's dump trucks all the way down. This duel of machines work together to clear a smaller side street. I noticed that as the snow plows worked, some residents would get out and start shoveling. This is because the leftover snow in their driveways and sidewalks can freeze fast and be very difficult to clear afterwards. So even though it was past 10 p.m. at night, it was the best time to be tackling the snow left by the plows. So as far as I understand, the crews go out every night clearing snow wherever their services can best be utilized. If there's a lot of fresh snowfall, the main routes of the city are cleared. When those priority routes are clear, then the other streets can be cleared, as well as snowbanks. After all that filming, it was time to head home. It felt like I was in another world since I couldn't see the street, accounting for the large snowbanks flanking me on either side. Although I lie, because we were actually returning to a snow dump, this time one that was on land. There are multiple dumps throughout the city, While dumping into the ocean is very convenient when it's close enough, over here it was better to make snow mountains on land. And then I really did go to sleep after this. Finally, when I woke up, it was snowing. Even though nighttime is when the city does the majority of its snow clearing, during the day, 
you'll still see snow clearing equipment operating everywhere. While the city does operate the largest network of roads, the prefecture, which is similar to a state in the U.S., and national governments also have their own roads and thus their own snow clearing operations. Additionally, private roads and parking lots will be cleared by those individual owners or businesses. During the daytime, I stumbled across a fascinating snow clearing tactic, the temporary blockading of streets. They dump tons of snow at both ends of a street in order to create a snow clearing work zone. Residents who are lucky enough to have free time will quickly try and dump their snow into the street so that it'll be taken away, free of charge. This is in fact why the city doesn't post in advance the areas they will clear. A city worker told us that if they did so, residents would just dump tons of snow out into the street, causing problems. One thing that certainly helps snow clearing crews is that there's basically no on-street parking allowed in Japan. So no pesky parked vehicles to work around. While all the operators do work hard at this job in the winter, this is not their full-time job. So that was a small peek into what my sister-in-law affectionately calls Josetsusha no Machi, Snowplow City. While I think I covered so much in this video, there's much, much more to life in the snowiest city in the world. So join me in my next video for more fun in the snow. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. If you live in a city with snow, how do they clear it where you're from?